Welcome to another episode of Forge Diaries. It has been a while and this episode is going to be a little bit different from usual. Let me give you some context while I light the forge. In the intro sequence you saw my reconstruction of the Mastermeyer Viking Age tool chest. Tony, who helped me back then, made a separate one for himself but was in need of the chest hardware, such as nails, hinges and strap for locking the chest. Let's start by looking at how to forge nails from 1 8 inch square stock. The basic idea is to forge a point and then taper it. The nail head is formed using a nail header. We are making square nails, which have more holding power, but require holes to be pre-drilled. It takes me a long time to even make a single nail. Anyone who does this professionally would have been able to turn out the nail in a single heat. I am setting the shoulder by using half-face blows on the edge of the anvil. The nail is then tapered until it has the right length and diameter so it will fit into the nail header. I am using a cut-off hardy to mostly separate the nail from the rest of the stock. However, I do not cut it off completely and instead twist it off once I placed it into the nail header. The end result is somewhat ugly and not completely centered. However, we have to make a few more, so let's hope they will turn out better. The next step is forging the hinges that will attach the lid to the body of the chest. We are not attempting any fancy ornamentation, but instead keep the pieces very simple, mostly to save on time. I am isolating material so that I can draw it out and bend it into an eyelet. I hope you appreciate the multiple camera angles, as they give you a little bit more detail on how the steel moves under the hammer. While the construction of the chest is very interesting itself, the contents, which are over 1000 years old, are also very interesting. They are the tools of a blacksmith and carpenter, very similar to the tools we are still using today. Once I've drawn out the material to about 2.5 inches, or about 6.4 centimeters, it is time to round it. The horn of the anvil makes it easy to bend the isolated material into something that resembles a circle. The other part of the hinge will fit into it. To save time, we drill the holes instead of punching them. And here you can take a look at the two hinges that will go on the chest, as well as the nails we have forged so far. Alright, now it's time to forge the strap that is going to attach to the lid, and because it's more visible, we will be doing a little bit of decoration. I'm splitting the material in two using a hot chisel, and then draw each side out individually to then curl it up a little bit. It is important to cut the steel directly in the middle, so that we have equal amounts of material on both sides. As the chisel is hardened, it needs to be cooled down frequently to prevent it from getting soft. One of the amazing things in working with metal is that it can be moved back and forth, and here I'm just getting the part I'm not working on out of the way. The individual operations are very similar to before. I'm drawing out the steel by forging a point and then tapering it, and once the piece is long enough, I curl it up over the horn. The main challenge is going to be to forge the other piece into an identical shape, or at least close enough that no major differences are obvious. 
Since the chest has two hinges, we need to make two of each part. This video only shows each step once. This seems close enough to me, and now we just need to clean up the middle where we cut with the chisel. The one part that is still missing is the hole through which the hinge eyelet can slide and travel. I am using a slot punch to create the initial hole. A drift is used to increase the hole size. Once a protective finish of paste wax is applied, I move on to the lock straps. For the lock, we are going to create a barrel hinge, which requires that I cut off half of the steel where the other side of the barrel hinge is going to be. To protect the anvil and the chisel, I'm cutting on top of a piece of copper. Now I need to true up the piece and slightly taper it where the end is going to lie against the strap after bending it. After some filing we are testing the barrel hinge. It is quite stiff but that's easy to resolve. Before we attach the two pieces together I am forging another decorative ram set. This is all very minimal in terms of style, but given our limited time, still better than nothing. Even though the video shows everything only in a few minutes, we probably still spent around 8 hours on all of this. Although I don't have a good reference on hand, barrel hinges have been used on chest locks for a long time. To turn the strap into a hasp through which a loop can fit and be secured by a lock, we need to cut a big slot into the strap. Since I did not have a small enough chisel, I am using a small slot punch. When the steel is cold, punching from the opposite side is enough to remove the middle piece. The final missing component is the steel pin on which the hinges are going to rotate. First, we need to form a head on one side starting with upsetting. Using the torch to heat up the steel, we form a head on the other side of the rivet by hitting it with a ball peen hammer in a circular motion. Now that all the hardware has been forged, we can dry assemble it. It's up to Tony now to finally finish his chest.
If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Check out some of my other videos and see you next time. By the way, next time is about making a small bookshelf and involves a lot of scrolls.